get started. We're recording. Okay. So uh, this lesson is on the phase shift of sine and cosine. So as I talked about yesterday, um, sine and cosines are just phase shifts of each other, right? And a phase shift is when you, you don't have to draw the picture. It's, it's, uh, it's just like I could take cosine and slide it forward, right? If I took uh, my cosine, oh, come on, you stupid thing, okay? If I took my cosine graph and I slid it forward, I would get my sine graph, right? And if I took my sine graph and I moved it backwards this far, I would get my cosine graph, right? So we talked about that yesterday, how those two things could be phase shifts of each other. And if I took sine and subtracted, no, uh, subtracted pi over two, I would move it back this way. And if I took cosine and moved it forwards, uh, cosine, wait, where's my cosine graph? If I were to take my cosine graph and move it forwards pi over two, then I would get my uh, sine graph, okay? But in any case, we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is a general formula that they give you in the book, okay? which is this formula right here, okay? Um, and D, I'm not gonna worry about D, D, so just to kind of pinpoint some things. This here is, what's that? What's D? What's D? This was yesterday's, in yesterday's motion. That's the, no, that's the vertical shift, okay? So that moves it up or down, okay? Vertical shift, A is the, a is the amplitude, right? Amplitude. B is, I call this the frequency, but it's not really the frequency. It's how many cycles your, your function will do in two pi radians. It's, it's kind of like how fast it's going, okay? So this is like, I guess we call this the stretch horizontal, horizontal, uh, compression or expansion, like how how may, how you much you squish it, okay? And when I have taught this before, okay, don't write this down because you'll get confused because this is where I got confused in the last class. When I've written this part before, in the old book, we went y equals a sine. Um, we put the b out here and then we did x minus c like this, where c is the phase shift. Don't write that down, because you'll get confused, okay? But that's kind of how a parabola works, right? If it, and that's basically how this works, too, right? If I wanted to shift the parabola, I'd have like y equals x minus 2 squared, and that would be with 2 to the units to the right. This works the same way except, I'm going to uh, get rid of all this stuff, okay? Except in this book, um, well, I could just go back to here. Write that down if you don't have it, okay? And then, uh, and then, except in this book, the phase shift is C divided by B, okay? Because if I, just to show you why that is, okay? If I were to take this B outside, A sine, and I bring the B outside times X, this would have to be C over B, right? What C or not C over D, C over B. Because if I distributed this through, do you say you get C B over B? And the B's would cancel out and I get C here, right? And if I distribute this through, I get bx over here. And so c over b is actually your phase shift. I should make that neater, okay? So this c over b, this is equal to, right? This is equal to this if I, if I uh, pulled the b outside, okay? But if you, the reason they do it this way, because it is if you put this in your calculator, you have to include another set of parentheses like this, okay? And then the other set of parentheses make it confusing. 
So just so you know, if you take this and divide it by this, you'll get the phase shift. Okay? So so uh, I'm going to erase that now. Okay? Or if it's a cosine graph, it looks exactly the same as if you have a cosine in front. And in the book, they give you this formula. Okay? This formula, which is oh, I made that happen all by myself. Um, so the uh, so they say that the start point to find the start point, you said be, if you just like to plug into formulas. I don't like to just plug into formulas, but if you like formulas, the start point is b x. You set b x minus c equals zero. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, and. Uh, the end point you said bx minus c equal to 2 pi. Okay? I like to think about it more <coughs> kind of intuitively, but um, I'll do an example in both both ways. In a second. Okay? You need some time to write. You're good. <laughs> Phase shifted c over and, uh then you should have enough to graph to sketch pretty much any sine cosine function. Okay, using what you already know, like how you find the amplitude and how you find the vertical shift. You take the max plus the min. But we'll do that. In a second. Okay, can I move on? Moving on. All right. So then we're going to use this to sketch the graph of sine of pi x minus pi over two. Okay. So the phase shift here is the shift. We're not going to do anything with a D in it as well, because it just phase shift is pi. It's B over C. So the phase shift is what? This is this, I mean C over B. So this is B. This is C. What's the phase shift? Pi over 2. That means that this graph is going to start at, and I just left the graph blank so you can find some points. Let's call this the point. Um, let's call, and since this is positive, oh, you know what? I think I started with too difficult to one. Well, I started with the harder one first. Maybe we should go back. Let's go back. Sorry. I think I started, no, no. I think I messed, I skipped up the first, that's the one I wanted to do, sorry about that. <laughs> I messed up, okay? I wanted to start with this one, okay? So this one, the phase shift is still, it's still um, C over B, so the phase shift in this case is going to be pi over 2 divided by pi, right? Pi over 2 divided by pi, okay? which is kind of over 1, which is equal to pi over 2. For those of you who don't like fractions, you copy, dot, flip, 1 over pi. That cancels out. So the phase shift is equal to 1 half of what? 1 half what? Radian. Okay, so it's going to be moved 1 half radian up. Okay, so if there's no units, it just means it's in radians. These are all going to be in radians. So your phase shift is one half, okay? And then um, we'll use that formula that I gave you in the last section or on the last slide um, in the next problem. So the phase shift is one half. Then I got to find the period because so this is going to be like my start point and then my or the x value of my start point and the x value of my end point, I'm going to have to find the period. So I know from a formula that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b, right? Remember that? I gave you that the other day. So 2 pi divided by b, b is pi, right? So I'm going to get the period is 2 pi divided by pi, which is going to be what? 2, okay? So I'm going to go 2 away from 1 half. What's 2 away from 1 half? 2 and a half. Two and a half. So this is going to be 2 and a half. I'm going to call it 5 halves. Okay? And that's the x value where it ends. Okay? 
This is a sine function, just a plain old sine function. So it's going to start at zero. It's going to go up and down. And it's going to do that in two radians. Where's halfway between one half and five halves? Three halves. Is it three halves? Yeah. Five halves plus one half is six halves. And half is six halves is three halves. That's right. So that's going to be three over two. Who said three halves? You get a fraction. You get an A. All right. Um, so um, I can give you a sucker. If you're accepting, you want a sucker? Yeah. Or, wow. wait, uh, the other thing I can give you is one of these. Uh, I just got my picture. Would you like one of these to put on your wall at home? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, what's halfway between, uh, what's halfway between one half and three halves? One, right? So one is here. And what's halfway between three halves and five halves? Uh, four halves, which is the same as two, right? So now you have enough points, and I know that this graph, since its amplitude is one, is going to go up to one halfway through. It's going to go back down to zero. It's going to go down to negative one. And you're going to get a nice graph that looks like this. Okay, up, down, and up. And that's what it looks like, OK? It should go right through that point, doesn't miss. And if they ask you to sketch two periods, you don't want to keep going positive. You want to show that you're smart and maybe go negative a little bit. So uh, since this is 1 half and it does 1 up down in one unit, like my scale isn't very good, but it's going to go back down. Let's see, this would be negative 1, negative 1 and a half over here. And it would go, it would do another full cycle going like this and back. Oh, that's really bad. It go down like this and then up and back down like that. Okay? Not that bad, right? That bad? That bad, Evan? It's good. How's your sandwich? Good? Good. All right. So, um, so now we're going to, I didn't do, I just did, did I go too fast? Do you want to see that again? Do you want me to leave that up there for a minute? Anyone who's copying this? We can move on. I have to erase my messiness here. There. Anyway, we can make it smaller. Let's erase my messiness. For the viewers in the home, the home audience might want to see some nice clean notes. Here. Um, okay. So then, uh, we're going to move on to the next one, which was the last one I gave you. Negative 3, 2x plus, and I'm going to use that formula in this one just to show you the way it works. Okay? So it, with this one, negative 3 cosine 2x plus pi. Um, first thing that you want to do is find the, well, we know the amplitude. What's the amplitude? Amplitude is positive 3 because amplitude is the absolute value of the thing in front. Okay. So it's got a stretch factor of 3. The phase shift, phase shift is pi over 2. We already did this one in the last one. OK, pi over 2. And the period is going to be what? Period is pi. OK, it's 2 pi divided by b, which is 2 in this case which is equal to pi. So this one's a little bit different. Instead of having nice numbers on the graph, I'm going to have multiples of pi. Is this going to be shifted left or shifted right? Okay, this is a plus sign, right? So it's going to be shifted to the left, pi over 2 radians. Okay? Now, do you understand that? If this, because the formula says this is minus, right, x minus h, or right, if you're doing in parabola. So in this case, since this is plus, I move to the left, OK? Um, the other thing is, I just want to show you how that formula works. Because the formula said to find the end point, I set this thing at the left, the start point, I set 2x 
plus pi equal to zero. All right. So I'm going to subtract pi from both sides. So at two, two x, not two pi. Okay. Um, two x, two x plus pi equal to zero. So I get two x equals negative pi. X equals negative pi over two. And that's my start point. Get it? That's my start point. Plug in into that formula. Just set what's inside these parentheses equal to zero. And that's where I start, at negative pi over two. To find the end point, I set this same thing equal to two pi. So I'm going to go two x, two x. I keep writing pi, I mean x. Two x, two x plus pi equals 2 pi. This is how you find the end point. If you like formulas, that's the end point. And then you subtract pi from both sides to get 2x equals... That's 2 pi. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Say one thing and something else comes out. No, no, no. 2x equals pi. x equals pi over 2. That's where it ends. Over here at pi over 2. Now, the other way I could have done this, and the way that I tend to do this, oh, this, this is nice and neat, right? <coughs> is I could have just said, oh, my period is pi, and my start point is, ne my shift is pi over 2 negative, so I'm just going to go pi, and I'm going to do one cycle to get to pi over 2, right? Because my period, it's pi units from here to here, okay? Since this is a cosine graph, it's either going to start at the top or start at the bottom. It's negative cosine, so where is it going to start? It's going to start down here at, at negative pi over 2, negative 3. Okay? And then it's going to finish at pi over 2, negative 3. Maybe I should make that a different color. Oh, it looks like Christmas. Okay? Um, and then Halfway through, it's going to go up to its high point of halfway in between here and here is 0, right? So that's going to be 0, 3. And then halfway in between there and there, what would be those points? Just that would be negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4, okay? And then so it's going to go through here and through here and through here. And it's going to be an upside down cosine graph that's going to go up like that, down, and boom. Okay? And then if you want to let compute do a couple more cycles, you could come over here to another pi, which would be 3 pi over 2, right? And you could do that again and go, uh, let's make it dotted so you know what I'm, and I could go through, up, through here to the top, up to three, down to here, and back down to there. Okay? Not so hard, right? Is that hard? Get it? Okay? Questions? You want me to leave that on for a minute? Leave it up for a minute while you ruminate on that? Move on? Can I move on? Connor said yes. Okay. I'm going to move on. So, and I'll post these if you want to look at it again or hear my cutting edge uh, videos. You can do it again. So I made this on Desmos. I know I said you're not supposed to use Desmos, but this is a great thing to use if you want to do a quick graph. It's, I found it's really nice to, nice to, you can use Desmos. I just, on a test, I'm not going to let you use it, okay? And, but it's really great for making questions. So I pl plug this in and I said, find the equation of that graph. So now we're going backwards, okay? Um, so this is kind of tricky, but it's kind of fun, okay? So first I would look for, first, I, first thing I do is I decide, do I want this to be a sine graph or a cosine graph? And that's kind of up to you. It can be either. Which one do you think it should be? Cosine. It could be a cosine, but then, and this would be my shift, right? If I start with a cosine. Yep, you could do it as both. 
you could start here. If I start, if I call this the start point, then it would be a sine graph, right? If I call this my start point, what would be the graph have in front of it? What would this be? What kind of graphs? It could be a negative sine graph, right? You could start here and call this a negative sine of something. Maybe we should do that. You want to do that? You want to be positive or you want to be negative? Positive. Okay, let's go positive. So if I'm positive, that means I have to shift it backwards this amount, right? And we're going to do a sine graph. So the horizontal shift, or is, oh, look at that. It's writing in dotted. Oh, I can fix it. Okay. So the horizontal shift, horizontal shift, is going to be what? How far is this? If this is negative 2 pi, that looks like negative 2, negative 2 and a half pi, negative 3 pi, right? Based on my scale. So my shift, horizontal shift, is going to be negative 3 pi. Okay? Then I probably want to find my period. Okay? My period is going to be, what's my period going to be? How far is it from here to here? How many pi's did I go? Oops! That I have to go all the way from here to here to do one complete cycle. How many pi's is that? It's 10, right? Because this is negative 3 to 2. So negative 3 to 2 is halfway, so that's 5 pi. So all the way is going to be 10 pi, so that's the period. Okay? There it is, 10 pi. Um, then what I want to do is find B, because B is what goes into the equation. So how do I find B given the period? How do I find B given the period? Yeah, so B is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, okay? So b is equal to, in this case, 2 pi divided by 10 pi, which is what? One fifth. Very good. Yes, you want one of my pictures? No. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so it's one fifth. And uh, so now I want, oh, and I also need the amplitude. That's easy. What's the amplitude? The amplitude, right, it goes up to 4 and down to negative 4. So the amplitude is 4. We're modeling this as a positive sine function. But I need, so in my equation, which is y equals, so far we have 4. We decided it's sine in parentheses. I have b, which is 1 fifth x plus, because I'm going backwards, right? The phase shift is backwards. but but I need to have, uh, I need to find out, I need, what I need is B, C divided by B, right? C divided by B? And I know that C is, um, I know that C divided by B is what? What is C divided by B? It's my phase shift, which is negative 3, well, we'll just call it 3 pi, right? So I know that c divided by b is 3 pi. I know that b is, uh, what's b? What's 1 fifth, right? b is 1 fifth. So I multiply 3 pi by 1 fifth. Did you follow that? c divided by b which is the phase shift, let me write that down here, is, is uh, c divided by b, since I shifted it left 3 pi, we'll call it negative 3 pi, okay? And b is 1 fifth, right? So when I multiply 3 pi times 1 fifth, I get 3 pi over 5. That's that's C, oh. that's C over B, okay? So, uh, horizontal, so that's 3 pi 
over 5. So this is not exact. My shift is this, but what goes in the equation is this. That's where it's tricky, okay? This is my shift, but what goes in the equation is 3 pi divided by, it's the shift divided by b, which is 3 pi over 5. You follow that? Because if I took this 1 fifth out, this is equivalent to writing y equals 4 sine of 1 fifth parentheses x minus 3 pi. You understand that? This is how I used to do it. This is how your book does it, like this. Okay, so this is the this is the shift divided by b. Okay, and they just do it this way so it's easier to put in your calculator. All right, get that? So, could you put this into your calculator? Go like this, sir. Yeah, you can put that in, and you could put this in your calculator. But if you did you would need to put two sets of parentheses, okay? Like that. Um, all right? Could I last? Yes, ma'am. Do you care what you want to do? No, as long as it's right, you know. If you put on a test, I would just get, in the book they always have it like this, okay? So, so I would use that, but I'm used to, I'm used to doing that. Okay, last thing. So now, we're going to talk about types for five or ten minutes. Do you know about types? Who grew up, who has lived near the ocean? Where do you live? California. They have tides there, right? Um, did you have, who else, anyone grow up or live on the East Coast ever? Where do you live? Well, I live um, in the middle of Virginia, so I didn't really go to the beach. Oh. Well, when I was a kid, I used to actually lifeguard in, on the beaches in New York. Okay. And I used to save drowning inner city kids because they come to my beach. And then, no, sir, this is a true story. Okay, they come to the beach and uh, they take a bus up. I grew up, did I tell you that? I grew up right near this amusement park on Long Island Sound. And people would take the bus up from the inner city and all these kids would come and they go, oh, look, there's these rafts out here. And we're going to bob, they didn't know how to swim. And they bob out to the rafts, you know? And then, and, like it was just up to their neck. But then they kind of hang out on the raft for a few hours or something and get a sun dance. And then they jump back in and figure they could bob back in. But the tides came in, and then it was over their head, and then they start drowning. So, so I would row around in my little rowboat. Like, so one day I saved like five people on this. I was a hero, you know, when I got out there. <laughs> medals and everything. No, no. So, uh, but, but, really, but really that happens. So back east, there's tides. And in California, there's tides. And anywhere there's an ocean, there's tides. And tides are typically on a 12-hour 12, 12 cycle, OK? And I stole this from the book. That's OK. But um, they want you to model this. So throughout the day, the depth of the water at the end of the dock varies with the tides. The table shows the collection. Use a trigonometric function to model the data, OK? Let t time t equals 0. See when you start. So what I'm going to do is draw a graph like this. Okay? I am going to kind of start with my first point, which is midnight. So at midnight, the depth of the water is 3.4 feet. Okay? Because what you're trying to figure out is when it is, you're trying to figure out a boat needs at least 10 feet to moor. That means like putting the boat in the, in the dock. During what times in the evening can it safely dock? Okay, so the, it looks like the high point is where? Where's the high point? 4 a.m. So if this is midnight, 4 a.m. is four hours later, right? So up here, you're at 4 comma 11.3, right? Then where does it appear that the low point is at? At 10 a.m., it goes <coughs> down to a low point, okay? which is point 0.1. So I'm going to put a little point there, OK? And then you just have to take it for granted that it's going to, that's the high point, and this is the low point, and this function is going to do something like this at point 0.1, and then it's going to start going back up again, like something like that, OK? 
So you can model this with a sine function, and it's kind of fun uh, because you, a boat needs 10 feet of water to dock the, throughout the day, the depth of the water, blah, 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 blah. So first thing you probably want to do is find the amplitude, okay? How could I find the amplitude? High point minus the low point. So the amplitude is going to be 11.3 minus 0.1 divided by 2, which is 11.2 divided by 2, which is 5.6. Yes? Okay. The, the other thing I probably want to find is the period. How long does it take to go from here to here? Anyone want to guess? Well, if it takes six hours to go from the top to the bottom, how long is it going to take to complete an entire cycle? I mean, is that six hours? From the top to the bottom, that's half of a cycle, right? So all the way, a full cycle is going to take how long? 12 hours, which means that B is 2 pi divided by the period, which is 12, which is pi over 6. Yes? Okay. What else do I need? I have A, I have B. What else do I need? It's C, right? Well, C is the shift, okay, divided, or the, it's the, this is where it gets kind of tricky, okay? So what's the shift? The shift is equal to, if I want to model this as a cosine function, the shift is 4, okay? But 4 is equal to B C divided by B, sorry, okay? 4 is equal to C divided by B, right? Is that right? C divided by B. And so, uh, But in the equation, I want C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through by B, which is pi over 6. And 4 times pi over 6 makes about 2 point something. I don't know what it is, like 2.1 or something like that. And so that's what goes in your equation. Real quick, I'm going to write Y equals I call this amplitude, we did the amplitude, 5.6 cosine of, 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 of the frequency pi over, or b, which is pi over 6, x. I'm shifting it forward, so it's going to be minus um, c, okay? And that's going to be 4 pi, 4 pi over 6. But it's also shifted up. I forgot one thing. I know it's getting really complicated. Okay. It's also shifted up. And it shifted up. This is the very last problem in your own. You can look at the example. It shifted up 11.3 plus 0.1 divided by 2, because that's how you find the middle point, okay? So 11.1 plus, so the shift to D is equal to 11.3 plus 0.1 divided by 2, which is 5.7. So that's going to get either tacked on at the front or the back. And then if you graph that, you should get this equation. You have to set up your window correctly. And then the last thing they want to know, when will the boot, boat be safe to go in? So, okay. so what you're supposed to do is graph the line y equals 10, and the boat's going to be safe to go in here and here, which corresponds to some hours on the time. So that's where you plug it into your graphing calculator and see what it looks like. That's a really complicated problem. And I'm sorry I talked at you all period, but uh, I don't know what else you got deliver instruction. Okay? And your homework, whoops, 
your homework is on Schoology, but I made it right there. There you go. You can write it down if you want. It said it's on Schoology. Okay. Yippee. Sorry, I'll go back. <laughs>